Welcome to Responsive Health and Insurance Brokers. Responsive has been operating as an insurance broker for the last 20 years since its establishment in 1999. We take pride in our employees' expertise and loyalty which makes responsive to what it is today. Responsive powers your business, powers your people. The difference between respond and react is as different as night and day. Responsive believes in preparing for the future, ensuring that when emergencies arise, our clients are ready and protected, and able to move forward with security and confidence. This is the guiding principle of Responsive's President and Chairman, Ms. Tess Rodriguez, a pioneer in the HMO and health insurance industry. Responsive provides expert advice and administrative support for your employee benefits and tailor fit your programs using your budget. Responsive is recognized for its various service offerings to both medical and non-medical services. We assure our business partners excellent and comprehensive representation with service providers in all aspects of research, evaluation, and negotiation. With over 20 years in the industry, we have built a strong network of service providers to look for viable solutions for your insurance and health plan needs. Responsive support your employee retention strategy. We offer comprehensive employee benefits packages to attract and retain the most important assets of any organization, your employees. We work with a wide network of HMO and group medical plan providers to protect your employees from various health risks. Our health programs enable your employees to be productive. We collaborate with you to protect your business from any type of risk, whether man-made risk or natural calamities. We will help you find insurance solutions so your business is ready for any emergency. We provide expert customer and administrative services to our business partners, including our pioneering efforts to provide comprehensive benefit management reports, information videos, and lifestyle fees. Responsive's health and wellness advocacy is enshrined in its culture of providing the best health plans for its clients. Bespoke Wellness Providers, a fully owned subsidiary of Responsive, aims to provide proactive wellness programs to the employees. We innovate to provide you more time to manage your core business. We are automating our core processes through the client portal. With an average of 99% client retention rate over the last 10 years, Responsive takes pride in providing consistent quality services to our clients across all industries. We are committed to provide our services and find proactive solutions to your business requirements. Responsive Health Insurance Brokers is here to support your business. Contact us anytime. Our main office is located at 14th Floor Medical Plaza Condominium, Ortigas, Pasig City. You can reach us through our contact numbers and our social media accounts. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
Welcome to Responsive Health and Insurance Brokers. We are very honored by your presence in our sixth webinar event entitled Stop the Big C, Understanding Cancer. Our topic for today's webinar is indeed an important one. We will talk about the big C, which everyone knows as cancer. Cancer is the second leading cause of death among Filipinos. The most common cancers are breast, lung, colorectal, liver, and prostate. What is cancer survival rate? How can cancer be detected? What is the type of cancer that is hardest to cure? How has COVID-19 pandemic made it more difficult to manage or treat cancer? We have also invited a special guest from MMDA, a key government agency, and he will talk about how the agency is man managing COVID-19 in the different cities and municipalities of Metro Manila. He will also talk about the various risk reduction programs in the midst of the recent typhoons and other calamities. So ladies and gentlemen, please sit back and we hope you will find our webinar informative and useful. Before we formally start the webinar, may we invite you to join us in a short invocation to be led by our customer advocacy specialist Ms. Jaja Laungaya. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together at this time of COVID-19 pandemic through this webinar. Father God, may this activity become a useful venue to teach and inform our business clients and the general public about the importance of health and wellness. We pray God for the leaders of our company and the participants of this webinar. And let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. This we ask in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At this point, I would like to introduce to you our very special guest, who will deliver the opening talk for this webinar. Mr. Mike Salalima is currently the Chief of Staff of the Office of the General Manager of Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or on MMDA. He is the MMDA focal head of, of disaster risk reduction and management. Mr. Salalima also holds the position of head of Metro Manila Emergency Volunteer Corps and concurrently the head of MMDA Central COVID-19 Command Center. A highly talented public servant indeed, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome our special guest, Mr. Mike Salalima. Yeah, um, good, af good afternoon to, to everyone. Uh, first to our dearest and good friend, uh, the president of Responsive, Ms. Tess uh, Rodriguez. Um, and to all the attendees, it's it's a uh, it's it's a privilege uh, to be invited. Uh, we, we thank uh, Responsive uh, for for this uh, uh, opportunity. Anyway, um, as I was looking at the the very topic of of the of the talk, no, I I was wondering how we can uh, be of help the the MMDA, especially the National Task Force. But uh, I believe that uh, since um, the, the main uh, topic of this uh, webinar is uh, uh, the, the fight against uh, the big C. Uh, may, may I or may we uh, also uh, digress a bit into what the government is doing now uh, in our fight against uh, COVID-19. Um, yours truly, Paul, is the current uh, chief of staff and uh, also heading the MMDA COVID-19 Central Command Center, which uh, initially um, uh, looks after Metro Manila. But then our role was expanded uh, by the Chief Implementer Secretary Galvez and Deputy Chief Implementer Secretary Dizon. So much so that we are now covering the whole of the Philippines and uh, we are very much present in all the regions and uh, provinces, including cities of uh, our uh, country so with this um my 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 very very short topic you know, just to open up the the very good um, 
event or uh, webinar for this afternoon is uh, just just to give you a glimpse no, of, of where we are uh, for Metro Manila uh, in terms of our COVID response and what the government has been doing for the last uh, eight, uh, eight months and, and going nine months already. Uh, we, we started our fight as early as, uh, as March no? uh, when the first COVID case was reported already. So with this, um, we'll, we'll show you uh, we, with the next slide uh, our, our um, initiatives uh, against COVID-19. Here, um, to our attendees right now, uh, the, the main um, strategic uh, group or, or, or uh, committee that handles our fight against COVID-19 is the IATF. No? That's the Interagency Task Force, which is uh, co-headed by uh, several government agencies. And the one that operationalized po, the um, strategies against COVID-19 is the National Task Force. The MMDA po initially uh, was requested to help uh, Metro Manila po ano, uh, during those times that uh, we have a lot of uh, COVID cases um, in the whole of the National Capital Region. So the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority uh, being also the head for the Metro Manila Council, which is composed of the 16 cities and one municipality of uh, Metro Manila, uh, we were you know, we were requested to help out the National Task Force COVID-19 in as far as putting in the um, interventions uh, here in Metro Manila. One, to, to lower down the, you know, the numbers and also to contain uh, yung, yung further spread po ng uh, COVID-19. So the, the national action plan that uh, we have been following, and we are now on the NAP phase three, uh, it remains anchored po ang uh, aming mga ginagawa dun sa tinatawag na PDI, uh, PDITR strategy. Ano? That is the prevent, detect, isolate, treat, reintegrate. And of course, we, we go to the mainstream, which is the uh, post-COVID, no? which is the new normal. Um, with this the uh, new normal uh, of course we we've uh, no, we've uh, undergone a lot of um, of uh, challenges uh, as well as uh, the fact that uh, of course there was once even a call of our um, well uh, our respected uh, medical practitioners uh, for a time out you know? So all of those uh, were, were considered by the government and all of those were, uh, were considered Hello. by the uh, National Task Force um, in as far as our, um, well, taking care of the whole of our country is concerned. But uh, let me, let me um, focus you a bit on the detection and the isolation that uh, the NAP phase three as well, yung, yung PDITR uh, uh, anchor or intervention uh, that we are doing. Uh, for, for detection lang po, uh, we, we are still maintaining ano, uh, yung tinatawag na aggressive community testing. Alam nyo po, uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but uh, since um, as early as May po, we've been doing or we've been giving, ano, free um free uh swab testing ano uh, ito po yung RT PCR which has been housed no sa Palacio de Manila uh sa Mall of Asia po uh Lakeshore in Tagui and as far as uh, Philippine Arena and all of those po that are in close contacts frontliners no uh, those are exhibiting symptoms are ano can can go here uh, in, in coordination with their local government units. And the government has been providing this for free. Uh, in fact, ho, as of now, uh, almost half a million people have been swabbed no? uh, uh, by this uh, mega swabbing facilities that uh, the National Task Force has, um, has created. And uh, dito po na naging effective ito because we were able to know kung sino po ang mga positive and uh, negative sa ating uh, uh, society. And therefore, all those that are positive, um, nag-graduate po ito into our isolation. 
Um, the aggressive community testing that we are doing is also, uh, um, well, it has an equivalent isolation intervention. Ano? Uh, we, we call this isolation po, yung Oplan Kalinga. Ano? If, and if, if you remember po, nung, uh, those, those period that uh, COVID cases are high in, in, uh, or were high in, in Metro Manila, um, we, we were left no, uh, with, uh, with a very grim possibility of even a, ano, no, yung ating healthcare system to, to shut down. So uh, we, with this, the government oh, had to improvise and we have deemed it uh, imperative and important na we have to put in an isolation facilities for those that are positive and asymptomatic wherein most of the positive cases oh, are in that bracket, oh, yung positive and asymptomatic. So by mid of July, we have embarked on a quite ambitious and yet, uh, well, uh, later on, it was proven a uh, very effective measure, which is to isolate all of our positive asymptomatics here in Metro Manila. Sa mga different hotels uh, dito sa Metro Manila, we we uh, ano po, we um, we negotiate and we contract hotels para po doon i-house yung ating mga positive patients. And yun po ang naging uh, naging sagot as to why our numbers are slowly and uh, um, deliberately going down. Ano? A very major factor po dito yung uh, pag-isolate ng ating mga asymptomatic cases because we are preventing uh, even yung person-to-person -person, uh, uh, transmission and even yung malala na community transmission. So as we go po uh, towards the end of the year and into the early 2021, um, we are still anchored po dito sa strategy na to and we will not uh, stop no, until po uh, we, we will be able to totally eradicate uh, uh, COVID-19 po through the vaccine that will be made available by, by next year. No? Um, so, so with this, so, um, we, we, we still uh, encourage our, our citizens to, to uh, practice pa rin tong, ano, yung, yung prevent, detect, and then we do isolation. We also treat and reintegrate. Ano? Um, next slide, please. Some uh, COVID-19 fast facts lang po. Um, Metro Manila now has only 2,369 active cases. So about 2,400 act active cases as of yesterday. And uh, we were in a high as 80,000 plus no? uh, back in the days na talaga pong uh, sobrang... Uh, napakarami ng transmission, napakataas po ng transmission ng COVID-19 at uh, up to the point na there was even a threat na baka mag-shutdown ano, or mag-collapse ang healthcare system natin. But as we go towards the end of the year and with the people being mindful po, tayo po, medyo nagiging sanay na tayo that we wash our hands or if not, we sanitize, we wear masks, no? And um, we... we uh, we practice social distancing. Ito na po ang numbers natin in Metro Manila. And this is uh, the report as collated po from the different local governments of Metro Manila. From 80,000, we are now at 2,369. Um, of course, uh, more than 90% of these active cases are just mild and asymptomatic. No? Unlike before, ho, na medyo mataas pa rin yung cases na nasa moderate to severe, at uh, medyo talagang sobrang nakakatakot but uh, right now um, we are we are blessed no na medyo nandoon na ho tayo sa bracket ng mild and asymptomatic that uh, about 91.2% as of yesterday are cases na with uh, having no symptoms at all or nandoon lang po sa mild na, na having uh, coughs colds or or uh, uh, mild fever no uh, of course, ito po yung sinabi namin na isa sa naging effective intervention po natin sa pagpapababa ng ating mga cases is yung aggressive community testing. Ongoing pa rin po yung mga tests natin na yan so that uh, of course uh, to our uh, brothers and sisters uh, responsive community, ano, uh, Ms. Tess 
yung ating pong mga clients, no? they, they, they can avail of this aggressive community testing. Uh, so much so, kung ang ating mga uh, employees would have a um, close contact with a positive individual. So let us do the testing for you. All you have to do is, uh, of course, get in touch with Ms. Tess Rodriguez and we'll be able to assist you. And these RT-PCRs are, are free and uh, this is funded by the government. So kami po ay ni-encourage namin kayo na gamitin yan ano? or, or we can avail of that. And of course, the Oplan Kalinga, wherein uh, if we tested positive and we are asymptomatic naman, we can put you in the hotels that we have contracted. And yung mga hotels naman, ho, these are not designed to... Ano, ano? to imprison you or, or even scare you. Ito yung mga hotels na kinukuha natin are, are designed or we have chosen them to be to be part of the recuperation and even uh, uh, recreation ng ating mga kababayan. We don't even tell them na mag-isolate kayo. Ang, ang sinasabi nga ho namin, mag-vacation mo muna kayo ng 14 days because government pays for your hotel 14 days and uh, with uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No? So in that way, kasi, yung mga, especially yung ating pong mga society na very vulnerable and hindi po gano'n naman ka, ka, kaya na mag, mag-isolate sa, sa hotels, no? ito po yung ating unang mga target. But gano'n na rin po sa ating mga kababayan na talagang na, natatakot. Ano? Kasi like, like for myself, when I, when I tested positive uh, back in June, uh, wala pa ho ang Oplan Kalinga. So, even if the doctor told me na pwede na po tayong ma-discharge ma at that time, I was hesitant to go home, no? For for further infecting my, ano, my my family, no? Uh, and also, of course, my my, uh, my my parents live in the same uh, area na, of course, vulnerable sila. And uh, nandun po talaga yung, yung ating uh, fear, that will be able to infect our loved ones. So with this Oplan Kalinga, how we 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 remove that lingering fear and at the same time we we provided an avenue wherein wala na ang community transmission in alis na natin and uh, all of these hotels are are properly uh, disinfected ano? and uh, we are very uh, blessed to say that uh, even yung mga hotel staff at this time ano in all of the Oplan Kalinga hotels that we have uh, contracted ay um, wala pa hong nagpa-positive or wala pa hong nahawa because of the positive patients that, that, that we have put in in their hotels. Um, another thing ho, right now, ang Oplan Kalinga hotels natin are numbering to about 60 already. And uh, considering the decreasing number po ng ating cases, uh, we will also be uh, lessening those those hotels. Ano? But uh, come the Christmas and the New Year season no miss tess eh, we are ano po we are uh, expecting some uh, hopefully uh, a, a few spikes uh, here and there pero uh, we we ano naman expecting na ma-arrest natin kagad yung uh, transmission na yan that's why we we're not letting go of many of the hotels that we have contracted um to, to our friends here look, look at where we are right now from the time na atin pong mga medical practitioners, in fact, our special guest also, si Doctora, would, would uh, agree with us na nung, nung time na nanghingi po tayo or sila ng, ng time out, eh, nasa 90% po ang, uh, ang occupation or nasa 90% ang utilization lahat. But look at where we are right now. Ang ICU beds po natin, uh, we have 59% uh, beds that can be used, ano? So when when we say ICU beds so uh, if if you have read of it nagtayo din po ang MMDA ng one hospital command eh. So what we did for Metro Manila all of the hospitals government and private naging one network so that uh, pagka po merong tumawag sa aming hotline at kailangan ng ospital na i-refer po natin kagad to the hospitals that they wanted to be referred to at kung wala namang preferred hospital hinahanapan ho namin kung saan merong bakante Unlike before, na sobrang tataas po and waiting time at kung nasa emergency um, emergency areas po tayo, emergency rooms ng three days, five days. Ngayon na, uh, in, in less than an hour or in, in, in uh, siguro maximum of an hour na po ay uh, nakakahanap na po tayo kagad or na-admit na tayo sa mga hospitals. Look at uh, our very good numbers as of November 24. 
our ICU beds, no, 59% of the total ICU beds in the whole of uh, uh, NCR are, are free. Isolation beds, 59% also are, are free. Ang, ang ward beds natin, 75% of the total ward beds can be used right now. And mechanical ventilators, 77%. So, um, nag-uusap-usap na po ang mga mayors natin, ang, uh, ang Metro Manila Council together with Chairman Lim that uh, as we have decided to remain in GCQ until the end of the year, uh, we are looking at a uh, hopefully a, a good and a better 2021 by putting our quarantine level to MGCQ, thereby mas mag-open pa ho ang economy. At this point in time, our economy is uh, taking a big hit already and our losses are to the numbers of uh, no, no, billions uh, already. And our economic advisors has uh, further um, reiterated that no more lockdowns tayo. We, we, we have got a, a good number uh, to, to start 2021 and, and we really hope that with the holiday season, um, with all our, of course, our uh, age-old tradition, yung mga family gatherings, it will not uh, result to, to ano, no, uh, transmission or higher COVID cases by the first quarter. But uh, of course, uh, ang, ang maganda po right now is that um, we, are, we are thankful that uh, most, if not all, uh, of our citizenry, ang ating mga kababayan, ay... Um, ano na po, uh, very, very much aware of the safety protocols. No? Um, so our uh, what we are espousing now is to really be consistent on all of these things that we are doing. No? So next slide, please. Um, just to give you some ano, no? um, idea as to where we are, um, probably most of us, if not all of us, are asking, no? where, where are we sa vaccine? Um, with the appointment po of our chief implementer ng National Task Force, si General Charlie Galvez, no? si Secretary Charlie Galvez, as also the vaccines are, um, it has now, our, our efforts has now shifted to, to be able to uh, immediately secure and uh, of course uh, procure at the soonest possible time uh, the vaccines that may be available in the market. Um, if we will be asking ano po yung mga priority areas, of course, Metro Manila, we're in 60% of our GDP are, ano, uh, are emanating. Uh, tayo po talaga yung unahin. And of course, uh, the other hotspots. No? Um, we have included Davao here because right now, ho, uh, as we speak, medyo mataas ang cases ng Davao. And uh, Davao now is averaging about 100 new cases a day uh, at this time. Ano? Uh, sa COVID. Of course, Bacolod and other areas na mga hotspots. Uh, we're, we're also checking now uh, uh, Region 5, which is uh, Bicol, uh, the Bicolandia area na medyo tumataas po. So the, the, the priority would definitely be a, um, a, a stagnant Metro Manila. But uh, the others medyo ano po yan, uh, magbavari pa. Now, for the target, of course, uh, it is very much uh, primordial to our to our cause of course, we, we put in the vaccine sa mga ating kababayan na, na mamahirap, no? indigents. But of course, um, most of the population here, dito sa Metro Manila, we're, we're looking at how we can uh, accommodate almost all, if not uh, majority of the Metro Manila population. Our target rollout of this is um, first to second quarter uh, first to second quarter of uh, 2021 and uh, minamadali po yan. Ano? Uh, right now, Secretary Galvez is uh, very much into the negotiation uh, with uh, no less than the President po ang, uh, ang uh, daily and regularly being updated. Ano, uh, ano po kasi yan eh? Um, if, if you will check the news, uh, even the President is saying sa ASEAN conference na vaccine must be made available to all. Ano? Uh, of course, we have to contend with the first world countries uh, and us being a just a small ano, no? small uh, republic as compared to the others. So, medyo we, we are hard-pressed to, 
to uh, negotiate uh, immediately and uh, ultimately makakuha po tayo ng allocation sa mga sa mga pharmaceutical companies but the the secretary and the president's marching order is to ensure that uh, we will have vaccine by next year and as to the volume that is the one that we are working hard uh, very much um next slide please <clears throat> Ito lang po, um, Ms. Ms. Tess Rodriguez has uh, texted me earlier na if I can stay po uh, sa, sa question and answer but my apology as I have another meeting po. Uh, pero ito po ay uh, by, by virtue of a department circular of, uh, of the Department of Health, uh, very timely po yung naging tanong ni Ms. Tess as to what can we do uh, during the holiday season to, to keep us uh, protected. Ano? So number one, uh, of course, we limit the number of people in family and social gatherings and activities. Preferably, uh, people within the same household na lang po muna. Uh, alam niyo, for the past eight months or nine months na hindi po tayo lumabas at uh, right now, eh, lalabas tayo just for the Christmas at uh, for the past eight to nine months, hindi po tayo nahawa. So let us let us care ano let us uh, practice uh, extra care at this time. Hindi na nga po tayo nagpositive ng 8 months and nung ika 9th month natin doon pa tayo nagpositive kung kailan Pasko. So we might as well celebrate ano uh, with, with our ano same household na alam naman natin kung saan nagpupunta to at alam nating mga negative ano. Number 2 is avoid activities that require travel to areas with higher quarantine classification. Of course um, there's no need to expound on this. Uh, uh, kami lang po siguro yung kung saan mataas ang COVID case, ano? uh, kami ho ang pumupunta. Well, to bring in the ano po, intervention and the help. Ano? But for us, um, let's stick na lang dito muna sa Metro Manila where our numbers are, are very good. Third is we keep activities as short as possible. Uh, the longer po the... We keep, we, we keep activities as short as possible, meaning to say, oh, uh, Medyo yung to, to linger more on the area, especially in closed spaces, huwag na hupo muna. And of course, we observe uh, always yung bida. Bawal, walang mask, uh, isaan ni tayo sa mga kamay, dumistansya ng isang metro and alamin ang totoong informasyon. So kami ho, through responsive, we're very much happy na may opportunity po kami to... Um, to uh, cascade itong mga information po na to na only the true information should be known to the public no medyo we we also do away with the uh mga fake news no and and i i know that is what is being espoused by my very good friend si Ma'am Tess Rodriguez no uh next one is avoid high touch surfaces and ensure cleanliness of surroundings ensure proper ventilation as what we have said Alam niyo po, mas maganda na ho na mag-picnic kayo o magkainan sa garden, sa open areas and open air areas kesa po yung nasa loob. No? Uh, even for me, ho, uh, if, if I would have a meeting in the restaurants right now, I always choose po yung outside uh, the, the restaurant uh, where in the air is free-flowing at uh, yun po ang isa sa mga mabibisang ano nagpapabawas ng concentration po ng virus sa isang area. And of course, if we are sick, we don't feel well, we stay at home and avoid social gatherings. no. And if you need to be, ano to, no? uh, ma'am test, if you need to be tested, you let us know. If you need to be isolated, you let us know through responsive. And uh, alam niyo po, ang responsive ay isa ho sa mga um, good supporters ng National Task Force. And responsive but always have the support of the National Task Force po. At may papakita lang po kaming video wherein we wanted to show the uh, effort no, ng government and private uh, partnership, the public and private partnership. Ito po sila. Thank you ma'am. Aangat tayo muli. Ito ang paniniwalang ating panghahawakan. Sa ngayon, pangamba at pagdududa ang pumipigil sa ating ibalik ang dating buhay. Pero aangat tayo muli. 
dahil may isang bagay na hindi kayang kunin ng COVID sa atin. Ito ang ating pagiging matibay at determinado. Tayo ang lahing hindi natitinag ng pagyo, lindol, baha, at pagsabog ng bulkan. Paulit-ulit bumabangon, ilang beses mang gulpihin ng sakuna. Kaya, aangat tayo muli. Kakayanin natin muli ito. Sa palaging pagsuot ng mask at face shield, paghugas ng kamay, at pagpapanatili ng distansya, hindi mo lang inaalagaan ng iyong sarili. Kung hindi, pati na rin ang mga nakapaligid sa'yo. Sundan natin ang mga ito at magkasamang salubungin ang sikat ng araw sa mga paborito nating lugar. Walang kasiguraduhan ang mga darating na araw. Ang sigurado lang ay kapag isinapuso natin ang pag-iingat, aangat tayo muli. Ingat-angat tayong lahat. Um, um, with this, so, uh, before I hand, um, in behalf po of the National Task Force, uh, with the Chief Implementer uh, Secretary Charlie Galvez, Secretary Vince Dison, and our agency po, no? Um, MMDA led by Chairman Lim and uh, GM Jojo Garcia. Papasalamat po kami sa pag-imbita uh, ng aking uh, uh, butihing kaibigan. No? Uh, it has been our pleasure na makapagbigay po ng additional information about our COVID response, COVID numbers, and the situation. And uh, to all of us here, uh, though we have this pandemic, uh, our, our lives have been altered. But definitely, we will come out stronger uh, after this. And with with companies like Responsive po, um, napapadali po yung, yung trabaho ng government at uh, uh, the partnership of the private and the public sector are, are very much important. So government cannot um, do it alone po. And uh, we hope na tuloy-tuloy po yung uh, pagtutulungan po natin. And uh, with this, ma'am, uh, ma'am Tess, my, my very good friend, salamat po sa in, invitation and uh, um, good afternoon to all. I'm, I'm ending now my, uh, my opening presentation and talk. Salamat po sa lahat. Thank you po. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to start our main webinar presentation. I have the honor of introducing to you our speaker for today, Dr. Queen Anjali Onrubia Berries. A licensed physician for more than 10 years already, our speaker is currently the president and CEO of ExactMed Incorporated, Gene Sequencing Analysis Center, and Medical Clinic. 
she completed her human genomics specialization course from Integrative Pharmacogenomics Institute in Malaysia. She is a certified occupational medicine practitioner, an experienced lecturer, workshop facilitator, and trainer for various health and wellness topics and programs to corporate clients across different industries. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our webinar speaker for today, Dr. Queen Anjali Onrubia Berries. The floor is now yours, Dr. Thank you so much, Ms. Aida, for the kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everybody is safe and healthy. Uh, it's so refreshing to hear the good numbers, no? Uh, as uh, mentioned by Sir Mike pre uh, earlier. No? So at least uh, we have a good news before we tackle our lecture for this afternoon. No? Uh, having the topic from another big C, which is the COVID-19, we will be talking about uh, the old big C, no? which means cancer. This is one disease that a lot of us has been really, really scared um, because of the consequences of the disease, because of the misinformation that we have regarding this disease, and because of uh, the different news and facts that we receive regarding cancer. So hopefully this afternoon, I would be able to share with you uh, the basic understanding of cancer, uh, of course, how to prevent it, and uh, at least give everybody here a little peace of mind with regards to the topic cancer. Okay, so, but before anything else, let me just share with you my slides. So primarily, I want uh, everybody to understand what cancer really is. No? So to be technical about it, when we say cancer, it means that it is a class of diseases characterized by out-of-control cell growth. No? So cancer has many, many types. Basically, we have over 200 different types of cancers, and each is classified by the type of cell that is initially affected. No? Uh, kadalasan tayo, we have this general knowledge of what cancer is. But we have to understand that each type of cancer is, actu is actually unique. No? Now, that one uh, fact about a, a type of cancer might not be necessarily true to another type of cancer. No? That's one thing that is very important for us to understand. Another is that uh, take note of the term out-of-control cell growth. So normally, all our cells in the body grows. No? It reproduces, it uh, grows, it matures, eventually it also dies, and then uh, another uh, group or another batch of cells will be functioning no? as our whole body again. Now, uh, when this reproduction and when this growth of a cell becomes out of control, no? So meaning, mas mabilis, mas, uh, mas malaki, at uh, <clears throat> mas uh, irregular yung growth ng isang type of cell, then that depicts cancer. Yan. So just to give you a little comparison, you can look at the illustration on the screen. No? The picture on the right, the uh, rightmost picture, no? would show us a normal cell reproduction. The picture on the middle would show us how a cancerous cell would reproduce. No? So you would see that uh, the difference in the borders, the difference in the number of cells that it, it reproduces varies a lot. No? So when we usually try to diagnose a patient, if a patient has cancer or not, usually they ba re request tayo ng biopsy. Yan yung tinitignan. If there is an abnormal, abnormally fast and abnormally active reproduction of the cells. Cancer is considered to be one of the leading causes of morbidity and mortality worldwide. So hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas ang mataas ang incidences of cancer. All over the world, mataas talaga ang incidences of cancer. And according to the data of the WHO, the number of of new cancer cases is expected to rise by about 70% over the next 20 years. 
70% is a very high number in medical statistics. No? So, ima- marami na akong naririnig actually uh, at this time, no, na bakit dati wala naman masyadong ganitong case ng cancer na to? Bakit ngayon parang ang dami? No? So, the numbers are actually exponentially growing. Now, uh, one of the most commonly uh, encountered na symptom of a cancer patient is having a mass or bukol, no, or tumor. But sometimes, no, uh, a tumor could, could be uh, necessarily not malignant or pwede rin namang malignant siya talaga. The problem is when I usually approach a patient at sinabi namin sa pasyente na meron po kayong tumor or meron kayong bukol, nagpapanik ang pasyente, no? A tumor is usually associated with cancer, which is not actually the case. No, Merong dalawang klase ng tumors that we have to understand. We have the benign tumor and we have the malignant tumor. Pag sinabi natin benign tumor, it means that this mass or itong bukol na to is usually just localized, hindi kumakalat, and it is not cancerous. No, pag sinabi naman nating malignant tumor, <clears throat> that is the cancer the cancerous type of tumor. Ito yung sinasabi natin kanina na actively reproducing, no? Abnormally reproducing. So pag sinabihan kayo ng doktor na meron kayong bukol at meron kayong tumor, don't panic at once. You have to check first is it benign or is it malignant, no? In terms of appearance, I would just like to show you some comparisons of the different kinds of tumors. <clears throat> you will <clears throat> you will see on the upper two upper pictures, no? Uh, these are samples of benign tumors. So makikita nyo, uh, the shape is actually well defined, no? So bilog siya talaga. The borders are very distinct. Okay, usually the uh, color is a little whitish. Kaya reddish yung nasa, nasa upper right, it's because of the blood. But if you wash off the blood, usually the uh, color is lighter. No? This is because most benign tumors does not have a lot of vascularities o wala masyadong ugat. No? Unlike if you take note of the picture in the lower right, no, makikita nyo that the color is actually darker. It's because of the high vascularity. Kadalasan ang bukol na malignant or cancerous, no? Maraming ugat because this vascularity supplies the nutrients of the tumor, of the malignant tumor. Bakit? Remember na mabilis silang magreproduce, mabilis silang lumaki, no? Mabilis silang kumalat. So they need more nutrients, they need more energy. No, the cells of a malignant tumor need more of what is usually needed by a normal cell. That's why it needs a lot of vascularity. So isa yan, pag halimbawa inoperahan ng isang tao, no, pag tinanggal ang bukol without the biopsy still, no, in a way makikita na namin more or less if a tumor is malignant or benign. It's the biopsy that confirms to us if it is malignant or benign. And then you take note of the borders and the shape of the tumor, makikita nyo na irregularly shaped siya. No? Hindi siya bilog na bilog. And then the borders are actually not clear. Now, sabi ko nga kanina, there are more than different, uh, 200 different types of uh, cancers. No? And each type of cancer is unique, even with the symptoms and manifestations of this cancer. No, but generally speaking, there are common manifestations among the different types of cancers that we can look after too. No? So there is what we call the local effects okay, and the systemic symptoms. Pag sinabi natin local effects, these are the signs and symptoms that you can see at the location where the tumor is. Okay, so and uh, they usually occur to the mass itself or the tumor itself with its ulcerations, no, yung parang may mga sugat-sugat dun sa mismong location. And uh, hindi siya lumalayo dun sa mismong tumor. No? So those are the local effects. Now, the systemic symptoms, on the other hand, these 
occur due to the distant effects of the cancer. No? Sabi nga natin, uh, yung cancer, it brings down a human being not because of the bukol, but what the bukol does to the whole body. So basically, the tumor, the malignant tumor is like a monster who gets a lot of our nutrients, a lot of the things that the whole body actually needs. No? So kinukuha niya yung lahat to the point that it affects the whole body already. Like uh, the person would already experience significant weight loss, no? fever, being excessively tired or fatigued. No? There are some changes to the skin. Uh, and if this tumor, since nagre-reproduce siya ng mabilis, ay kumalat or yung tinatawag nating metastasis, no? uh, some manifestations would give us a hint kung saan siya kumakalat. For example, if a patient, a cancer patient, is already developing headaches, seizures, and vertigo, so pwedeng kumakalat na siya sa brain. If the patient is uh, developing cough, hemoptysis, or yung pag-ubo ng may dugo, no? and this niya, or yung hirap na paghinga, then the lungs, uh, pwedeng kumakalat na siya sa lungs. Okay? Now, uh, if you are noticing a lot of kulani, no? or lymph nodes na tinatawag natin, uh, we call that lymph adenopathy meaning that the tumor is already spreading through your lymph nodes. Now, if your liver is beginning to be inflamed and uh, growing, and then you experience jaundice already, then pwedeng kumakalat na siya sa liver. And if a person would experience a deep, sharp pain, no, or skeletal pain na tinatawag, fra uh, easily fractured, no, uh, compression in the spinal cord, and other skeletal areas, then pwedeng kumakalat na siya sa buto. Okay, so these are just the common uh, signs and symptoms at the same time, the signs and symptoms if a cancer is already metastatic or uh, extensive. So apart from that, these are the usual uh, symptoms that we can actually uh, experience if you happen to have cancer. No? So, number one is difficulty of urination or having the blood in your urine. No? Uh, you can have unexplained lump or bukol, firmness or swelling anywhere in the body. Okay? Then, uh, sometimes we can have persistent abdominal pain or swelling, back pain or bony pain that doesn't go away. We have unexplained seizures or changes in behavior, headaches that don't go away also. We have frequent or unexplained bruising, unusual paleness or a rash of small or red purple spots that can't be explained. We have unexplained bleeding, feeling tired all the time, frequent infections or flu-like symptoms, unexplained vomiting, unexplained fever, no, especially uh, having high temperatures with excessive sweating. We have unexplained weight loss, feeling of short breath, and then changes in appearance of the eye or unusual eye reflections in photos. So these common manifestations would be telling us either we have a cancer, a focal symptom of a cancer, or even a metastatic symptom of a cancer. But do not panic if you feel some of this because until the time that a biopsy is done, cancer would, would still be not absolutely confirmed. No? Kasi marami, kung mapapansin nyo, marami sa mga manifestations na to na pwede mong maramdaman with other diseases. No? So these manifestations would just give us some hints or clue if we need to seek medical attention, if we need further medical investigation para malaman if a person really has cancer or not. So, until hindi pa na mabiopsy yan, hindi pa kailangang magpanit. Now, I have mentioned that we have several types of cancer. Of course, I won't be mentioning all the more than 200 types, but I will just be mentioning to you the common types of cancers. No? So, the most common uh, sites of cancer among men are usually the lungs, the prostate, colon, 
rectum, stomach, and liver. For women, on the other hand, we have breast, colon, rectum, lung, cervix, ovaries, and stomach. Generally speaking, in the Philippines, we have the top 10 most common types of cancer. So we have uh, top of the list is we have breast cancer. Second is lung cancer. We have liver, then cervical cancer, colon cancer, thyroid, rectal cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, and the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So these are the top 10 <clears throat> of the most common types of cancers in the Philippines. Now, if you ask me, Doctora, saan ba nang gagaling ang cancer? Okay? So the deepest root of cancer is still a blur in the medical field. No? So marami kasing risk factors that could actually trigger a cancer. But what we are sure of how do cancer arises is that cancer is a genetic disease. No? So ibig sabihin, nasa genes natin yan. When we say genes, these are uh, our blueprint. No? Ito yung nasa DNA natin. When we are born, we have a particular set of DNA. And, this, and these genes could actually dictate the different systems, the different functions of the body, as well as the different diseases that we are predisposed to. No? Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you do have a gene for a particular cancer, that you will have that cancer. No? Usually, that gene, that gene would have changes. No? Uh, and that changes that would control the way our cells function, especially on the growth and division of the cell, that would actually trigger the cancer. Okay? They can also arise during a person's lifetime as a result of errors. Okay, that occur as cells divide or because of damage to DNA. Like, for example, particular exposures, no? like exposure to radiation, exposure to certain chemicals that could change, damage, or even trigger the genes that you have. Okay. Now, in, uh, in oncology, we have uh, what we call the algorithm in managing cancer patients. No? Of course, different patients are managed in different customized way. But generally speaking, this is the algorithm on how uh, we manage uh, cancer patients. No? So we start off, of course, with clinical findings. Pag sinabi clinical findings, ito yung meron nakikita during your checkups or, for example, during your regular uh, physical examinations and laboratories, merong nakita na hindi maganda. From there, okay, uh, we will have further investigation either through scans or imaging or kung may, may nakitang bukol, then we have the biopsy. Now, with the help of the biopsy and the scans, then at that time, we can diagnose if cancer is present or not. Now, the biopsy would confirm the cancer. The scans or the imaging would confirm the stage of the cancer. Okay? So after the diagnosis, the cancer would be staged. Ang tanong, doktora, ano ba yung staging ng cancer? Okay. The staging of cancer would tell us how big the tumor is kung may tumor. No? Uh, it would also tell us kung gano'n na siya kakalat kung ano na yung mga na-involve niyang parte ng katawan natin. No? And this would also give us the guide, guidance kung anong klaseng treatment ang pwedeng ibigay sa pasyente at kung ano ang prognosis ng pasyente. When we say prognosis, that is the outcome of the patient. How high is the chance that the treatment would be successful? How high is the chance that the patient would survive for the next five years? Okay. Now, once the cancer is staged and graded, then we have to identify the therapeutic intention. No? Pag sinabi nating therapeutic intention, ano ba ang gusto nating mangyari during the management of the cancer? If the cancer is on early stage and uh, the intention is to control and to actually cure the cancer, so don't magpa-pattern yung management. Curing. 
no? But if, for example, the cancer was stage, or no, latter or terminal stage, no? Magtatanong uli tayo dyan, no? Tatanungin natin yung pasyente, tatanungin natin yung pamilya, ah, uh, kung treatment ba talaga ang magiging priority even though the treatment uh, chance the success no of the treatment is quite minimal already or improving the quality of life of the patient no so yun yung ter therapeutic intention trying to determine ano ba ang magiging treatment uh, path for the patient and then after which of course therapeutic decision will be done and management will be conducted. No? So that's generally how we manage cancer. Now, in the management of cancer, we have to understand that there are several uh, types of management depending on the type of cancer that the patient has. No? So meron dyan yung tinatawag natin radiation therapy, merong chemotherapy, merong surgery, no? and we have the palliative care. Uh, now, because of the advancement in science, we have genetic therapy as well. Okay, so ano yung pagkakaiba-iba nila? But before I, I, I tell you that, we have also to understand na hindi lahat ng klase ng cancer e eh, kailangan lahat itong mga treatment plans na to. No, So depende sa pasyente, depende sa klase ng cancer, depende sa stage, which one would be the most appropriate and fitted for the patient. Okay? So what are the, these different types? When we say radiation therapy, this is subjecting the patient to highly radioactive uh, rays that are expected to damage and kill the malignant cells. Okay, pag sinabi naman nating surgery, as everybody knows, is uh, literally taking out the tumor or the cancer, uh, the cancerous mass, no? Yun yung sa surgery. Or at least control, no? The spreading of the cancer through surgery. Pag sinabi naman nating chemotherapy, this is actually giving medications either through uh, oral or through the veins or yung parenteral na tinatawag, no? And then uh, those chemotherapeutic agents are expected to either prevent the spread of the cancer, to kill the cancer cells, no? And to control the cancer cells. Now, uh, when we say palliative care, it means that this uh, is usually given to patients who are in the terminal phase of the cancer disease. No? This is targeting more the uh, improvement of the quality of life of a patient. Minsan kasi kailangan natin i-balance. Eh. Pag halimbawa yung pasyente ay terminal uh, case or late stage, no? ang kanyang cancer, iisipin mo pag binigay natin etong klaseng therapy na to, like for example, chemotherapy, as we all know, has a lot of side effects. What will it do to the patient? Knowing that the chance for the patient's survival is quite low already. Would you subject the patient to a decrease in the quality of life or you just make the quality of life of the patient better? Like nandyan yung pain management, nandyan yung uh, care, of the terminal, terminally ill patient, making them more comfortable. You have your psychological and spiritual support. And of course, the end-of-life care for the patient. Okay. Medyo depressing pag-usapan, no? Yung palliative care. But this is actually a very important part of cancer management. No? Sa ating mga Pilipino, ayaw natin ang pag-usapan pag something is already terminal, if the cancer is already end-stage, if we know that uh, the patient has a very minimal chance of surviving, no, that's very stressful for us. That's very uh, traumatic, no, for us. But we do have to discuss that. Lagi nating iisipen na yung pasyente ay hindi lang siya pasyente. Na tao yung pasyente na yon na may nararamdaman na merong epekto yung, yung pinagdadaanan niya, especially on the latter stage of life care. So we, it is very important that we have to consider because most of the time, especially with the relatives, ang concern natin, kailangan gumaling. 
no? Paano kung yung paggaling niya is very, very minimal chance na lang? Okay? Tapos, pag binigyan mo siya ng treatment, ito yung magiging effect dun sa patient. No? So, if the patient, for example, has a survival rate no, of just one year na lang, would the one year na pwedeng isurvive ng pasyente, would you subject the patient to a very devastating uh, weekend no? and a very limiting lifestyle? No? So, yun yung mga hard questions that we actually have to discuss with the relatives and the family and the patient as well. Okay. Now, these are the other treatment options that are available uh, now when it comes to cancer management. So, meron na tayo mga hormone therapy, uh, of course, the surgery, the bone marrow transplantations, no, the uh, radiation and immunotherapy. And we have to be uh, thankful that we are born in, a, in an era of advanced technology because we already have targeted therapy. No? Na kayang i identify if a cancer is detected in an early stage, kaya natin i-identify the specific approach to that specific cancer to that specific patient and increase the chance of success dun sa treatment ng pasyente. Okay. Now, of course, uh, though we want to have more advancements in the treatment of cancer, uh, being an occupational health physician, I always prior prioritize prevention over cure. No, yan ang aming motto, being uh, occupational physicians. Mas maganda yung prevention over treatment. No, So, uh, we have uh, several advancements in science that could give us prevention methods for cancer, especially for those uh, patients that have identified their risk for cancers already. Okay, so isa dito yung tinatawag natin chemo prevention. When we say cancer chemo prevention, this refers to the use of agents for the inhibition, delay, or even reversal of carcinogenesis before invasion. Pag sinabi natin carcinogenesis, that is start of the, the development of cancerous cells. No, so, meron ng mga studies na nagsasabi sa atin ng ganyan. Uh, chemo prevention are classified in four major categories. We have hormonal, we have uh, medications, we have diet-related agents, and we have vaccinations. So, to further explain these four categories, no, so, mag-start tayo with hormonal chemopreventive agents. So, meron ng mga gamot na available in the market right now that are uh, used to actually regulate hormones of certain patients so that uh, that patient would reduce the risk for certain cancers. Like for example, we have the anti-estrogens no? or the selective estrogen receptor mod modulators or SERMs. There was a study, a meta-analysis study combining data from nine clinical trials and comparing use of SERMs, no? Uh, with uh, placebo. Pag sinabi natin placebo, ito yung blanco na gamot, no? Uh, and was seen to have significant decrease in breast cancer incidences with treatment compounds. So, ibig sabihin dito sa mga study na to, nakita na uh, for patients who were identified to have high risk for breast cancers, binigyan sila ng mga anti-estrogens and there is a significant decrease no, in development of breast cancers among these subjects. No, so these are just samples of the anti-estrogens. Of course, hindi ko i-explain uh, itong in detail sa inyo dahil tutulugan nyo ako pag ginawa ko yan. No, I just want you to see ano itong mga samples na mga gamot no, or anti-estrogens na pwedeng ibigay dun sa mga pasyenteng high risk for uh, breast cancers. Yan, no? So, techni technically, we have three types of anti-estrogens that we give right now for high-risk patients. Next category is medications. No? Uh, there are some medications that were seen to have effects no, on the risk of a person 
to a particular cancer. Example is aspirin and other anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, I'm sure everybody is aware of what aspirin is. No? It is usually used for uh, prevention of heart attack. Uh, pwede rin siyang gamitin as a pain reliever no? and anti-inflammatory or para humupa ang pamamaga sa katawan. Now, um, according to studies, cancers are directly associated to inflammation, to chronic inflammation. So pag may matagal na, na dire-diretsyong namamaga, this could actually trigger the start of a cancer uh, cell. No? So this inflammation is uh, reasonable to assume that if you do have agents that would control inflammation such as aspirin and anti-inflammatory drugs, this could, this could actually help uh, prevent cancer. No? So this could be a chemo-preventive property. But I would like to warn everybody because these medications like the aspirin and the NSAIDs or yung mga pain reliever natin, no? these are readily available. It does not mean that you can abuse them to ensure that you would not have cancer. No. Definitely a proper evaluation of a patient no, before taking this medication is very, very important. No? Kasi alam naman natin na ugali ng mga Pilipino na pag may nalaman na ay maganda pala to, eh, tendency aabusuhin natin. No? So we don't uh, that is actually dangerous to do. So, bago natin uh, itake itong mga gamot na to, make sure that you have consulted your physician first if that particular medication is actually appropriate for you. Uh, a large body of evidence no, from both randomized trials and observational studies has strengthened the hypothesis that regular prophylactic aspirin use reduces incidence of and mortality from colorectal cancer in the general population. No? So, yun yung isang nakita sa studies natin na magandang uh, use ng aspirin aside from the uses, the common uses that we have for aspirin right now. Although, the data, uh, some data would show us that reduction in the incidence and mortality of esophageal, uh, gastrointestinal, and stomach cancer, as well as inverse no, association with breast, prostate, and lung cancer. Another common medication that was seen to have effects on cancer risk in humans is metformin. Okay? So I'm sure very familiar then ang metformin with most of us. This is a commonly prescribed drug. Uh, that is used for the treatment and control of diabetes, of type 2 diabetes. For women who are having uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, ginagamit din to na medication for, for these patients. But it was seen that the crucial role of energy metabolism in cell growth and proliferation implies the anti-diabetic or metabolism-altering drugs may hold preventive and therapeutic value. No? Since metformin is the one uh, that helps a patient uh, regulate the metabolism, uh, specifically of sugar, no? uh, of a person or of an individual, nakikitaan ng preventive value and even therapeutic value in controlling cancer, itong metformin. There are also some studies that indicates that we have uh, decreased cancer risk compared with those on, on, on other anti-diabetic medication. So meron tayong uh, nakita ng na mga studies, na, uh, na mga data na nagsasabi, for those who are, uh, for those diabetics that are taking metformin compared to other diabetics that are taking other medication, mas mababa yung incidence of developing cancer dun sa mga nagtitake ng metformin. Okay? Yeah. So, the third category is the diet-related agents. Uh, for me, this is one of the most... Uh, important among the different categories of chemo prevention ito yung diet related agents yung pinaka importante because the diet related agents are the one that are more commonly available to patients 
no so hindi mo kailangan uh, ng gamot hindi mo kailangan ng uh, prescription to actually access this diet related agents no several micronutrients have attracted the attention actually of the scientific community because they have seen potential cancer preventive agents no so among them are diet derived antioxidants kaya na uso yung mga antioxidants aside from protecting us from infection and giving us a boost in our immune system antioxidants were seen to have uh, roles in preventing development of cancer okay one main reason of this it's because uh, antioxidants would actually fight off the free radicals that we emit whenever we are stressed and as we know when we are stressed we uh, we have this uh, what we call oxidation happening inside the body causing uh, the production of these free radicals and these free radicals could actually trigger you no know, the changes in cell reproduction or trigger cancer so antioxidants micronutrients that uh, assumes the role of antioxidants could actually help prevent the development of certain cancers but not all um, antioxidants or not all micronutrients could prevent there are even some micronutrients that could actually trigger not like in the case of the carotenoids or your beta carotenes okay uh, beta carotenes are fat soluble red orange pigments no so malalaman natin na may beta carotene or carotenoids ang isang pagkain pag ito'y pula or orange okay now for some types of cancer beta carotene is actually very beneficial okay but with other types of cancer specifically the lung cancer too much intake of beta carotene or car carotenoids could actually trigger your cancer no uh, specifically the lung cancer okay so imagine nyo if you are on your uh, health conscious mode no that you uh, really oblige yourself to eat a lot of vegetables and knowing that uh, carrots are actually good antioxidants so kakain ka ng madami but if you do have the genes for lung cancer, it would actually trigger, no? And it would increase your risk for the manifestation of that gene by 50%, no? That's why it is very important to know ano ba yung mga risk factor mo at ano bang classing uh, cancer or types of cancer that you are at risk para malalaman mo to what type of lifestyle that you have to design yourself with. Okay, now, it is also noted no, to have increased association with the development of uh, prostate and stomach cancer as well. Now, in the case of folic acid, folic acid is usually popular sa ating mga pregnant at yung mga nagbabalak maging pregnant. No? So usually, if you are on your early stage of pregnancy or if you are planning to get pregnant, your OBGYN would prescribe you to take folic acid. But that is not the only role of folic acid. No? Another role of folic acid is actually uh, has dual and modulatory effects on colorectal cancer. A certain amount of folic acid is good to prevent uh, colorectal cancer. But if you have excessive amount of folic acid, no, it could enhance the development of colorectal cancer. No, that is why you do need your physician to actually help you regulate the intake of your folic acid. Okay. Now, in the case of men who has the genes for uh, prostate cancer, folic acid is actually very beneficial for them because a certain dose and amount of folic acid would help prevent the manifestation of the prostate cancer gene. No? So, hindi lang pang babae pala itong folic acid na to. Even the men would have some benefits in taking folic acid. Okay. Now, uh, folate Supplementation has a promoting effect on the progression of established colorectal neoplasm. But make sure 
no na tama ang dosing kasi sabi nga natin kanina if you have a um, uh, hyper optimal dose of your folic acid instead of the preventive use of folic acid for colorectal cancer ipopromote pa niya yung development no so make sure that the dosage are well regulated now we have vitamin D okay very uh Popular din ang vitamin D ngayon because uh, we do need some supplements to boost our immune system and vitamin D is uh, included in the list. No? Uh, but apart, uh, apart from that, it also plays an important role in calcium metabolism no? and of course other physiological functions. There have been studies that says that many cell types, including the colorectal cells, no, would express vitamin D receptors. And activation of these receptors by vitamin D has been re reported to exert anti-tumor effects. So bukod sa immune system, vitamin D could help prevent development of colorectal cancer as well. Okay, There have been suggestions for a minimum vitamin D intake in the context of colorectal cancer prevention. So kung makikita nyo, with the different uh, diet-related agents and even supplements, no, very important ang dosing. Kasi pag sumobra, merong pangit na effect. Pag kulang, hindi mag -e effect So kailangan tamang-tama yung dosing ng particular uh, supplements and even diet-related agents for you. Then we have flavonoids no, that are usually seen in fruits, vegetables, tea, and wine. Ito na yung mga mahilig mag-wine dyan. Okay, so finally, we have something to confirm that wine has a good effect for everybody. Because in a epidemiologic data, uh, it was seen that a protective role of flavonoids on particular cancer types such as the lung, breast, colon, and prostate. Ang tanong, doktora, ibig sabihin, I can drink as much wine as I could. No. No, hindi pa rin to lisensya para magpakalasing tayo sa wine. It just means that if you do take a moderate amount of wine that is within the threshold of your liver, which I have discussed it with you in my previous uh, lectures, no, then you can have a good effects of wine, which is a good source of flavonoid. At the same time, hindi lang naman wine yung source ng flavonoids natin. So, meron din tayong tea, vegetables, and fruits. Okay? And the last category is vaccines. So, we are lucky that we have already some vaccines that could uh, prevent cancers, no? Like the anti-HBV and anti-HPV. So, ano ba yun? Yung anti-HBV, that's the HEPA B vaccine, no? Because uh, it was found that people who were infected with hepatitis B has a higher risk of developing liver cancer. So kung meron kang vaccination against hepatitis B, it would protect you from that type of infection. Hindi ka magkaka-hepatitis B, then thus decreasing your risk to develop uh, liver cancer. Okay? Ang anti-HPV naman, ito naman yung uh, used to prevent uh cervical cancer for women. No? Ito yung anti-cervical cancer vaccine na tinatawag. Uh, the vaccine does not uh, directly prevent no, the development of uh, cervical cancer. But what the vaccine does is that it prevents you from the virus, no, the HPV virus, that could trigger the cervical cancer. So para hindi ka ma-infect nitong mga HPV virus na to, no, pag na eh, pag na vaccinean ka, pag na injectionan ka ng anti-HPV, it protects you from those virus, thus in turn protect you from developing the cervical cancer. Okay. Yeah. So aside from the cervix, the uh, anal, penile, vulvar, vaginal and oropharyngeal uh, cancer could also be prevented because the HPV virus infects these uh, places or these areas. Okay. 
Now, apart from uh, this uh, chemo preventive uh, measures, of course, there are other preventive modalities. No, marami pa tayong pwedeng gawin para ma prevent yung cancer. No, this would also give us the peace of mind na hindi na tayo masyadong ganong katakot kasi meron pala tayong pwedeng magawa para hindi magka-cancer or uh, though this all of which are not 100% but definitely they will decrease your risk of developing cancer. So number 1 na diyan yung regular physical activities, no? So dapat medyo gumagalaw-galaw tayo. Uh, in my previous lecture, I have uh, told you already kung how frequent, how uh, intense, no? the types of exercises that we need. So, yun yun. Kailangan natin ng regular physical activities. Uh, avoiding excess alcohol consumption. Okay? We have decreasing saturated fat and red meat intake. We have maintaining a healthy body mass index or BMI. No? Then, uh, stress and fatigue management. No? So, importante na ma-manage natin yung ating stress and fatigue because as I have mentioned earlier, it helps, uh, if we are stressed and fatigued, we produce a lot of free radicals that could be triggers of your cancer. No? So, yung free radicals, pagkain ng cancer yan. So, pag masyado tayong stress at fatigue, the tendency, marami tayong pinapakain free radicals sa cancer genes natin. Okay. Uh, we also have monitoring, which is very, 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 very important. No, yung monitoring. Uh, nandyan yung yearly pap smear. We have our mammogram and ultrasound. No, when you reach 40, you have your colonoscopy. Uh, you have your PET scan and blood tests. Uh, sa monitoring, of course, depende kung... Uh, ilang taon ang pasyente kung babae o lalaki at ano yung mga risk ng patient no so uh, ideally dapat kino-customize yan per patient ano ba ang dapat i-monitor sa pasyenteng ito every year or every two years no depending on the risk that the patient has and uh, finally ang pinaka advanced no in terms of technology that we can do right now to prevent cancer is doing the gene sequencing analysis no uh, the gene sequencing analysis basically would detect specifically the type of cancer genes that you possess no minsan sasabihin niyo nakakatakot naman yung doktora malalaman ko na kung anong cancer akong pwedeng magkaroon on the contrary hindi nga siya nakakatakot kasi since malalaman mo na no through the gene sequencing analysis kung ano yung mga risk uh, factor genes mo no then you would be able to know paano mo ngayon i-design ang iyong lifestyle. If you remember my very, very first lecture in this lecture series regarding optimum health, pinakitaan ko kayo ng uh, mathematics of health. Diba? At isa sa variables doon is the gene, uh, is the genetics. So imagine ninyo, if you have, if you already know, no, yung variable na yun, which actually magiging constant na siya kasi malalaman mo na, di ba? Uh, which is your genes, you already know your uh, genetic predispositions, then mas marami kang pwedeng magawa to actually prevent the trigger of those genes. No? Like for example, yung kaninang minention ko sa inyo, if you know that you have the lung cancer gene, then you would not, you would be aware not to eat a lot of carotenoids that can trigger the lung cancer gene. So, imbis na halimbawa at age 45, you develop lung cancer because you have been eating a lot of beta-carotene. Since alam mo na, no, you can actually live further. Maybe at the age of 85, you would die of heart attack. No, From eight, uh, 45 to 85, that's 40 years of life. Just because you, know, you knew your genetic predisposition. Okay? So, these are just some pictures of uh, the, how we can actually monitor breast cancer, which is one of the leading cause, uh, type of cancer in the Philippines. No? Kaya ko gustong ipakita sa inyo because uh, by experience and by clinical practice, marami kasing natatakot dito sa monitoring na to. No? Especially with the picture on the left, 
which is a, an example of mammogram, maraming babae ang natatakot dito kasi masakit daw. Okay. So, good news because nowadays they are using the plastic type of mammogram machine already. So, hindi na siya ganun kasakit. No? At the same time, even though there is a little pain and a little discomfort, it would only take a few seconds para ka lang pinikturan. No? And uh, tapos na yung procedure. But this would actually help save your life. No? Kung every year you can actually do this. Uh, the picture on the middle is actually uh, an ultrasound. No? So ganyan. Pag sinabing ultrasound, ganyan yung ginagamit. Uh, this picture shows us a breast ultrasound. Pero ultrasound can be used in different parts of the body to detect uh, tumors as well. No? Tapos yung picture on the right is a picture of a scanning or an imaging uh, procedure. Okay? So very, very important yung ating monitoring. Now, uh, by next month, no? by, uh, by December, uh, I will be conducting uh, our year-ender lecture, no, for this uh, for this webinar series, which is uh, I entitled "Welcome to the World of Genomics." Okay, so in this lecture uh, that I conducted to you this afternoon, we focus on cancer itself. At marami akong binanggit sa inyo na things that we can do to prevent cancer that would involve the world of genomics. No? We are very, very lucky and very, very blessed that we have this technology na mas mataas na yung chance natin of surviving and even preventing cancers. And not just cancer, but also other diseases. No? And I will be talking about all of which, no, the world of genomics, how genomics would help us manage our health and how genomics would actually maximize our life. No, so hopefully I would see again everybody next month no, for our year-end uh, lecture. And hopefully I would welcome everybody to the world of genomics. So and with that, before I end my lecture, let me remind everybody that a good life is a collection of happy moments. No? Regardless if you are diagnosed with cancer or not, no, make sure that making a good life story, no? a good collection of happy moments becomes your culture. Lagi kung ang sinasabi, no? if a patient uh, is diagnosed with cancer, I usually tell the patient, you are actually lucky. No? Look at it as something that is a blessing for you. Why? Because since you know you have cancer, you are then given the opportunity to prepare. Unlike if you go out of the house and you are hit by a bus and you did not prepare at all for your end life. No? If you are, uh, I'm not promoting cancer, but if you are diagnosed with cancer, take it as an opportunity for you to prepare for the things that you need to, pre to prepare. And do not stop collecting happy moments because again, a good life is a collection of happy moments. So with that, I hope you have learned uh, something this afternoon, and I am now ready to accommodate your question. Uh, I, may I pass the floor to Ms. Leah? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Averis, for that very wonderful um, presentation, very comprehensive presentation. Uh, at this point, we will now open the question and answer portion. We will have Dr. Queen Berries to answer your questions. We would like to thank our participants who sent their questions in advance and to those who sent questions via the chat box. The first question for you, Dr. Averis, is this. What is the impact of COVID-19 pandemic to cancer deaths? How should cancer patients stay safe without compromising cancer treatment? Okay, thank you for that question, Ms. Leah. Okay, the pandemic actually did have a lot of impact no, in the treatment uh, of cancer, in the management of cancer patients, and even in the death of cancer patients. So number one, since the pandemic is uh, dealing with a very infectious disease, which is the COVID-19, knowing that cancer patients are um, immunosuppressed 
no so bagsak ang kanilang immune system because of the therapies that uh, they are receiving so the rate of mortality among them is actually high no mas maraming namamatay um and a lot of them recently it's because of infection and not because of the cancer okay that's one another is that since we do have the pandemic and most cancer patients know that they are immunocompromised, they're actually afraid of going to the hospital and receiving their treatment. No? So, ang tendency, since hindi sila nakaka-receive ng appropriate treatment nila or nasa stop ang treatment nila because of that fear of getting the COVID-19, nagpo-progress yung kaninang cancer. Of course, making the uh, mortality rate of cancer uh, going up. No? The numbers are actually going up. So, ang ano natin dito, uh, for those who are, if you know somebody who are receiving treatment for cancer, tell them to continue their treatment. No, uh, you just have to make sure that all precautions are being done before you make you receive the treatment. But do not stop receiving your treatment. No, uh, lagi namin uh, sinasabi yan no to all uh, patients, not only for cancer patients, but generally to all patients. Hindi lang COVID-19 ang sakit ngayon, no? Yung mga sakit na meron tayo before still exist. So we also have to take care of the other diseases. COVID-19 is just one disease, no? Though malawak ang sinakop niya, but it's just one disease. So do not forget to take care of the other diseases as well. Uh, here's the second question, Dr. For breast cancer patients, what medications and supplements should I stop taking? What are the most common risk factors for breast cancer? Okay, thank you. So, kanina, I have mentioned, no, um, yung sa mga chemo-preventive agents natin. So, isang chemo-preventive agent natin is anti-estrogen. So, yung kabaliktaran nun, no, if you take a lot of estrogen, then you are actually increasing your risk for breast cancer. No, because basically the high levels of estrogen triggers uh, breast cancer. Okay. At the same time, if you do have uh, the risk for breast cancer, be very careful with the hormones that you are taking. No, kahit yung ating mga oral contraceptive pills for our uh, females here. No, so be careful in taking them. Make sure that you consult your physician first, that your physician knows that you have a risk for breast cancer or even ovarian and uterine cancer before taking any of these medications. Okay. Um, the third question, Doctora. Um, if I have a strong family history of cancer, what is my chance of getting another cancer? How does that change my treatment options? Should I see a genetic counselor? Okay. If you do have uh, a family history, no, especially yung direct lineage, pag sinabi natin direct lineage, either your parent or your grandparents, no? so yung, yung pagkakasunod-sunod. Um, the, if you know a family member on direct lineage that has a particular cancer, that information alone increases your risk by 20% already. No? Ang tanong doon, paano kung hindi mo alam? What if you did not know that somebody in the family actually had this particular cancer? No? So yung uh, next question ni Ms. Leah, uh, do you need a genetic counselor? Yes, you do need a genetic counselor. No? Um, pero hindi lang genetic counselor. Bago ka pumunta sa genetic counselor, you do need to know your genetic predisposition first no kailangan ma-identify muna because not necessarily you have your parents have the uh, disease that you actually have the genes already pwedeng hindi pwedeng lumaktaw pwedeng hindi mo nakuha so if you really want to know your genetic risk kailangan malaman and ma-identify yung particular genes na meron ka no? Now, once you have those informations already, then you go to a genetic counselor so that the genetic counselor could guide you no? kung ano yung mga pwedeng gawin para maiwasan yung manifestation of these cancers. Uh, but let me remind you, no? kahit na uh, binigay sa iyo yung lahat ng information na yun, no? uh, na, na ibigay sa iyo yung mga recommendations, if you do not follow 
those recommendations, of course, the risk would still be there because the genes are already there with you. No? So, minsan kasi, uh, mas nagpo-focus tayo dun sa information that we have this gene for this particular cancer. Nakakalimutan natin, since now we know what's next. No? So, dun tayo mag-focus. Since you know, then what's next? Then you can do something about it. No? Uh, may mga part specific recommendations talaga for particular genetic disease na na-identify. So, you follow them. Uh, that would decrease your risk. It would not eradicate totally the risk, but it would decrease the risk significantly. Okay, uh, we have another question. One more. <laughs> in, uh, Doctora, um, in the Philippines, cancer is considered the second leading cause of death in the elderly. However, there is also a high incidence of cancer in lower age ranges. What is the reason for this alarming trend? Okay. So, babalik tayo dun sa first lecture uli natin sa optimum health. So, sabi natin dun sa mathematics of health, the factors are we have the genetic, we have the physical, and when we have the environmental factor. No? So, the, envi on the environmental factor, nandiyan yung mga exposures natin, nandiyan yung uh, diet natin, no? the lifestyle that we have. No? So, those things actually are significant factors as well. So with the change in lifestyle, with the change in exposure of younger people, they are being subjected to more triggering factors for specific cancers. Kaya maraming na-identify. That's one, no? Mainly yun yung reason. But another reason, it's, it's because we are in an advanced technology era, mas madali nang madetect kasi. No, uh, previously, no, siguro about uh, 50 years ago, for example, hindi ganun kadaling, kadaling i-detect ang isang cancer. Akala nila na, na kulam lang, parang ganun. But now, even in the early stage or even in the genetic predisposition stage, na-identify na siya. So, uh, akala tuloy, mas maagang lumalabas. Actually, no, uh, there are some cases na mas maagang na-identify. Yun yun. But nevertheless, given all the information that we have right now and having uh, the changes in lifestyle, i-integrate natin yun. Which lifestyle, which practices would give us uh, the lowest risk no, to develop this cancer at yun ang gawin natin. No? Para, uh, just for everybody's information, when you're born, you have a specific lifespan. Given yun. Sa ayot sa gusto mo, meron ka talagang specific lifespan. Like for example, 100 years old, yun ang lifespan mo. Pag pinanganak ka, yun na yun, hanggang 100 years old ka. But because of the different risk factors, pabawas ng pabawas yun. Until the point na mag-meet yung iyong uh, current state at yung nababawas sa lifespan mo and then you will experience expiry or death. no So, meron uh, tayong magagawa to actually maximize uh, the lifespan that we have. no? So, bukod dun sa mga na ituro ko na sa inyo with our previous lectures and our and our lecture this afternoon, yan ang isa sa mga aabangan nyo no? sa ating year-end lecture on genomics. Uh, how can we actually maximize the lifespan that we are given? Okay, um, due to time constraints, we will now ask the last question again for for you, Doctora. Uh, for for companies, what cancer prevention programs do you recommend for the employees? Are these cancer diagnostic tests that should be included in the annual medical exam programs? Okay. So, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, yung very, 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 very important is monitoring. So, I understand most companies would have your annual physical exam, you know, yung mga APE nyo, uh, laboratories. So, that is actually good. But what I can uh, advise to you is customize your APE. Huwag laging general ang inyong design ng APE. No? Usually, yan, sa company, meron yan yung basic five. Diba? Meron yung basic five, tapos uh, that includes your x-ray, your urinalysis, diba? yung mga ganyan. Tapos you have your uh, 
physical exam. No? Ang may advice ko sa inyo, i-customize nyo. Like for this age, for example, for men, 40 and above, i-include nyo yung PSA kasi nandiyan na yung risk nila for prostate cancer. No? For women, 35 and above, no? yung iba could actually include it at 30 years old and above, include nyo na yung uh, mammogram, yung breast ultrasound para ma-monitor ma na. Uh, yung pap smear, very important. Ang pap smear, 35 and above, or basta sexually active na ang pasyente, kahit na 12 years old pa lang yan, kailangan yearly may pap smear na. Not, uh, that would help us monitor early detection of cervical cancer. So, sa monitoring, no, yun ang pinakamagandang approach in the corporate setting, customize the design of your APE according to the demographics of your company. No, para mas maging effective, hindi lang para masabing nag-APE sila. Okay? And not just ano, not just on cancer itself, but uh, on the different diseases. Depende sa demographics ng kumpanya nyo. So, kung ang kumpanya nyo Maraming marami sa population ng company nyo na ganitong age bracket, na ganitong gender, na ganitong risk. So, doon naka-base uh, yung design ng inyong APE. No? So, customize your APE. You can ask the help of your occupational physicians or your occupational doctors uh, to help you customize your APE. Thank you very much, Dr. Averis. Um, any parting words for our participants? Okay, so it has been a very uh, stressful lecture because we are talking, uh, we talked about cancer, no? But uh, I think uh, this will be very helpful for everybody. So I do hope na marami kayong natutunan this afternoon. And uh, hopefully I would be seeing you again on our last lecture for the year. So I hope to see you next month. And hope to welcome everybody in the world into the world of genomics. I'm sure this will be very exciting for everyone. And again, my monthly reminder: please always keep yourself safe. No, nandyan pa rin ang pandemic, so please follow, follow all our uh, health uh, standards, our precautions, and sana matapos na itong ating pandemia. Okay, with that, so be healthy, everyone. Have a Good uh, evening and uh, hope to see you again. Thank you. At this point, we will now formally end our webinar event. We would like to thank Dr. Queenie Berries and Mr. Mike Salalima, our distinguished speakers for this webinar, for sharing their expert views and insights. We will now activate the Zoom online survey for the participants. Your feedback is very important to make us improve our future webinar events. May we request you to participate in the quick survey by selecting the rating for each survey question. Do not forget to click submit after you answer the survey. The recorded version of this webinar will be posted in our website and YouTube channel. Please watch out for it. Thank you everyone who attended the Zoom webinar webinar online and for those who watch the webinar through our Facebook live streaming. See you in our next webinar. Goodbye everyone.